Who indeed greetings unto you, beloved and holy friends. Thank you so much for joining me again on another live stream, another video, another moment. I do appreciate your presence. Let's melt more into being. We're trying a new subreddit today. Like I was. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I sent this this video to one of my friends of this dude running up to like a baby camel and his mom that's like standing in the middle of the road and he picks up the baby camel and runs like into the, well, into like the side lane of the road, so out of the road basically. And as he's like carrying this baby and like running around with it, the like baby is screaming profusely and the mom is chasing after. And it's just this like, you know, humans being bros or... <laughs> Whatever. Just made me smile, made me so happy just to see that. And then, like, when I exited that post, I saw... Oh. Hello. Something just fell in my water. I saw that you could stream on this subreddit. So, <laughs> humans being bros. I saved this little dude's life, yes. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to. I've never seen a little fly like that. <laughs> Thank you for joining me here, friends. Before I take a sip of water, I do want to say something worth saying, if you will. <sighs> All events are neutral because creation is forever new. Mm. Creation is forever new. Oh, man, the title of this video is My Life is Meant for Me. You know, and that is something I've been... I've been thinking about a lot. Not, not necessarily the me aspect of that, but the fact that each and every single one of us has a life meant for us. Definitely. Like, and if we weren't living the life that we are living right now and in this moment, there would be a lack of the life that we are living out there in the world somewhere. And there is no lack in the great, divine, infinite, source, consciousness, God, universe, whatever you want to say. What's your philosophy? I'm not sure if I have, like, a, you know, this one, one philosophy. Like, I feel a lot of the ideas that I'm, I'm holding these days come from so many different sources, you know. Some of the, th the stuff that I feel has a lot of value comes from the Kabbalion. Some of the stuff I have a lot of uh, personal uh, fascination with is like the Stoics. Uh, also, like Buddhism has some, some really cool ideas. And I, I grew up living in a Christian household. So, like, I, I do think that in, in a lot of ways in my life, I was exposed to different religious belief systems. And, I, like, I started pulling, like, patterns from that. The more I learned about spiritual practices and people's understanding of these, you know, ethereal realms, if you will, the more I realized that they're all trying to describe the same thing using different terminology. And after I like, genuinely realized that everybody is trying to explain the same thing with different terminology, I decided within myself that I'm going to go out and try and find whatever that terminology is for myself, right? To try and put myself out there in a way that I genuinely am going to be able to learn from that source instead of accepting what has been learned from that source, you know? And I'm not trying to take away anything from people's hard work or the stuff that they've been doing or the stuff that they've learned in their process. But I, I do believe that there's a lot of value in trying to find these things for yourself. You know, and it's, at least in my opinion, it's something that constantly kind of throws like wrenches into your understanding of the world. Because every time you kind of feel like you've consolidated on this one philosophy, this one spiritual practice, this one religion, this one breathing exercise, this one meditation type, like... I think if you try and consolidate and just have this one thing as the only thing in your life, life gets really stale. So like being able to do different things, being able to consider different philosophies, being able to constantly grow in the understanding of those things as well, in my opinion, is the best way to go about it. 
so <laughs> question everything, my friend, question everything. Good morning, Melt fam. I'm very pumped about a recent purchase. I got a pair of fish flops, which are flip flops that are shaped like fish. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm I'm trying to picture what those must look like in my mind's eye. And I mean like in in the way that I'm picturing them, I can't I can't see them as like something that you wear out out and about. Maybe like if you're at the beach it'd be comical. But like I'm I'm imagining you just like strutting through New York City, dude, in your fish flops. <laughs> I want to see that. I want to see you like, you know, the the runway walk, hips swinging with fish flops now, man. Can they win today? I hope so, friend. I hope so. I hope we can all take some win from this day, you know, whatever it may be. I feel my win for today is, is starting something new, if you will. <sighs> I'm probably going to get stoned by Discord. You know what? So I can I can like mediate. I can mediate and then I tell you afterwards and then building suspense. So like I've been I've been thinking a lot about taking these streams and then taking snippets off out of it and then using those as like individual uploads because I know it's difficult to watch an entire one hour, two hour stream just like once, right? So I was like talking to myself about, yeah, you have to do this. But I'm like, oh, but that's a lot of work. And uh, like, I already don't have time. And I, I mean, I didn't get to do much else today, but I do feel good for having done that. So I have like five different like videos that I've uploaded now to like a, a YouTube shorts channel, uh, my YouTube shorts channel. And then also, and here it comes, also TikTok. <laughs> And legitimately, the only reason why I've now finally decided that I will actually upload something to TikTok is because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do here is reach people in a loving way. And they shouldn't necessarily need to not be deserving of being reached in a loving way just because they're using a platform that isn't Reddit. Like, I'm probably going to try and bring as many TikTok people into Reddit. Like, no, leave this platform and come and join reddit please this is the way i'm gonna send you them in discord please do dude i want to see them i'm gonna wear them out and about to the club to the bar to the subway yo you should do it have a second channel for clips i do i actually do thursday i'm doing it dude it's been done i have five clips up man <sighs> like and i i've dude I'm, I'm pushing myself dude i'm really pushing myself this morning was a fantastic stream we, we shared so many smiles with so many people. And like I, I feel like today's energy, or at least my, my intention for today when I was waking up, came from what I was going through last night, where I, le I was legitimately like looking myself in the face, you know. And if I could, I would be whipping myself back and forth like by the sleeve of my shirt. Is it the sleeve of my shirt? I, I'd be like have, holding on to myself like, damn it, what the... <laughs> You know, like angry. I was like angry at myself, almost shouting at myself in the mirror. And like, dude, what are you doing? You know, like I feel I feel like I'm not doing enough ever. And then that feeling of not being enough, not doing enough, like kind of instigates the way that I feel like this is something that I I just became so painfully aware of again today. Like Joe Dispenza talks about how when you're. Okay, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. Your thoughts is like your mind, right? The, the things that you think and your feeling is your, your body's like re reaction to those things. So when you feel bad, your mind induces these thoughts that are going to confirm to you the way that you feel. And if you have these negative thoughts, then your body is going to try and confirm to you what you're thinking. And yeah, dude, that was just again like this... This feeling of unworthiness that we sometimes have in ourselves, you know, like, uh, um, you know, I'm not going to work as hard for myself. I'm not going to give myself as much love. I won't take care of myself as much. I won't eat as healthy as I'm supposed to. I won't exercise because I'm not worthy of these things. You know, I'm not worthy of being happy. I'm not worthy of being healthy. And it hurts. It really hurts when you feel that way about yourself because it's not the truth. It's not the truth. It's an illusion we tell ourselves. It is, it is conditioning, I feel as well. From a young age, we, we, we like get brought up into this world where 
we're constantly expected to produce and we're constantly expected to like exceed in whatever it is we're doing we never genuinely just allow true being not anymore at least lame i i kind of knew you were gonna be here today dude i was like feeling your energy beforehand as well i was i was gonna ask you have you uploaded your bliss track to bandcamp with the lyrics man you're mesmerizing thank you eastern ad I would extend a compliment back your way as well. But I do not know what you look like. Know that I love you nonetheless, though. And thank you for the this. Hey, Doge. I would let you get on me, but she's... I, like, I genuinely don't know how she does it. Like, she gets so dirty that it looks like someone took her by the back legs and dragged her through, like, gravel. Like, that's... <laughs> it's She's a mess. An absolute mess. And then she wants to do, like, you know, get on your lap. And this is like a daily thing. My parents have been bathing her. But she doesn't seem to mind that much. I guess it's one way to do it. But constantly bathing a dog. Looking forward to seeing them. <laughs> I'm also looking forward to seeing the fish flops, dude. That's hilarious. How's it going? It's going well, man. I'm doing all right. Stream got dropped. Do -do 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 I don't think I saved my title today. But I also don't think I'm going to be streaming to that same subject. is actually something that can be used for many different... Oops. Someone else's stream. Please tell me I, I copied it. No, I didn't. Sub chickens. Day 183. My life is meant for me. Because if your life wasn't meant for you, who is it meant for, you know? Like, legitimately. I know it's, it's a, kind, of, kind of like a smooth brain thing to say, but we genuinely are where we are in life for a reason. I don't believe in this, like, there's, there's no point to the universe, right? Like, life has no meaning. I don't believe that at all. Interestingly enough, there was a friend going about our pan asking, why is, there in why is there existence instead of in existence? And instantly to my mind came, came this like thing that Alan Watts used to say, where we, we assume there has to be this thing before other thing. There has to be this in existence before there is existence. Or there are like separate things from each other. But if you look at a snake, and in the way that it slithers on the ground, right, is is the head the thing that is leading, and the, the body is the thing that is following this head of the snake, or is this back of the body pushing the head of the snake, right? Is which which part of the snake is the the head, and which part of the snake is the tail, is, is like <laughs> is so arbitrary because it's the same thing. Existence and inexistence is in itself the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, Rina's here as well. Uh, I join and the stream drops, but we're back. We are back, Len. I'm so happy to see you. Uh, each end is a new beginning, though. Also, greetings. That is true, friend. And I, I, I didn't know if you were, like, talking about the snake analogy as well, because quite literally, each end is a new beginning. Like, there's so many different ways that we visualize this understanding of almost the nature of our universe, how it has this pendulum swing, this sine wave, this like, uh, like you can also also think of it as like the, the eye shape. If you have like two intersecting sine waves, they make these eyes, right? Eyes. And then in those eyes, you can kind of have more of those if you like make the, the sine waves a little bit smaller and you can continually do that exponentially. And you can kind of look at our year and in the way that is structured with our four seasons in that way. You can kind of make them these little sine wave eyes, like each month can be one of, each season can be one of those, and then each of those, in each of those seasons you have your individual months, and then in your individual months you have your individual days, and technically you can like kind of extrapolate this understanding of our universe all the way up, right, from this 
complete big bang, this creation, this point of nothingness becoming everything, and then this everything becoming the nothingness again. And then when there is nothingness, then this everything wants to be again, you know, and it's this, oh man, it's this like infinite cycle. Like how many lives have we lived? How many lives have we lived? Ooh, so many, <laughs> dude, so many lives. And we're still doing it. Yeah, we're not stopping just yet. Hey, it's insane. Dude, I'm happy you're here. Gov is here as well. Good morning to you, friend. Thank you for joining us. Bonjour, bonjour. Uh, what have you? What have you, lovelies? What have you, lovelies? I think we're just having some water today, Jovan. Now that we're, I think, officially streaming. Don't think it's going to drop again. First one always drops. But second one is pretty stable. I want to set an intention for why I'm drinking water today. And like initially when I was meditating, I was thinking about today's intention and I like was telling myself I want to have it as mind and body. I want to become very aware of my connection between mind and body. But, but I feel beginning and end may have more weight to it. You know what? I'm going to stick with my gut feeling actually. And, and remind myself, at least, of mind and body every single time I take a sip of water. When your brain thinks and has this process of thoughts, that is mind. Right? But that is something that is external from the thing thinking it. From this body that we're ha we have. And it's from that body from that chemical place which we feel and this mind like is something that fascinates me as well because i believe in a way this mind can be seen as something that is almost a frequency that we tune into with our like physical biology bodies and oh man this is this is racking my brain again So, yeah, the understanding for me at least, and a thing that kind of trips me out that I like to do with myself to kind of remind myself the difference between mind and body. And we've done this before, but it's so fun for me to do, so I'm going to do it again. Put your arms down, like on your legs, on a table close to you, and look at your hand, you know. Like have it completely relaxed as it, as it lays wherever it does. Look at your hand and try to lift your hand in the same way that you try to you know, call the, the remote to you if it's on the other side of the room and you're like comfortable on the couch. Try and do that to your hand. Like, it, to me personally, it makes my hand tingle. You know, it gives me such a weird feeling. Because what I'm trying to do is use my mind to lift my hand instead of using my body to lift my hand. Because I know how to use this brain, you know. I, I basically prompt this the signal electrons flows literally down nerve endings contract muscle cells and my hand lifts up but the fact that i can imagine lifting my hand without lifting my hand at least me shows that there is this genuine separation between this mind this this consciousness this i have which just fell off and our bodies our physical realities mind and body. I saw an avo fall and then the next thing I saw was a, a dog playing with it. <laughs> Each end neck what a playing. Uh, my GoPro is here as well. Thank you for joining us my friend. Uh, hey Dan, my service is my service is in and out right now. Oh, it's okay, dude. Ben, it's so nice to see you again, my friends. To th those of you who don't know, and some of you do know who Ben is, but Ben is going to be a dad. Ben is going to be a dad. Can you believe that? Ben! Like me and Ben have been like talking for a long time. And like the first time I started talking to him, his, his wife wasn't with him at the moment. Like she was visiting her mom. And now she has returned and her mom has returned as well with her. And they've been living with her, like together. 
And yeah, now there's going to be a new member to the family. Dude, man, just just new life, man. It, it like absolutely blows my mind. And you know, like the reason it blows my mind as well, Ben, is because in in the way that we're trying to, you know, live our lives, trying to connect with one another, trying to be there for one another, try and share this light that we know we have to share. You're bringing another being into that environment. And I just, I just, oh, it makes me so happy. I think, I think to myself, if I got to grow up in the environment that I'm trying to create for my children, what a, what a difference in experience that would be. How would I have turned out? That's a, that's a great, real, great, curious question to me as well. Probably not the same, but I guess we'll have to find out. Same lane, it's a bit laggy today. I think it might be because of where we are as well. At least the YouTube's gonna be, you know, smooth. Nah, 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 nah. I can appreciate some good existential snake imagery. There you go, friend. Enjoy your existential snake imagery. <laughs> uh, I thought you all were talking about those little curious snakes in the den. In that den. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Ben. I don't think we're talking about that. Oh, we moved over here. Hello, friends. Yes, we did, Yater. The first stream, like, dropped nine minutes in. So I'm assuming they didn't want me there. So we're, we're here now. We're here now. Uh, is that SD in that order? No, no. Unfortunately not, friend. I would have told you if there was, though. On Reddit. There was a snake den on Reddit. I didn't actually see that. I feel like I missed out. Anywhere you look, you can find sine waves, cycles, or a fundamental part of life. It is, Tally. It really is. Because, like, technically a sine wave is just a, repre a representation of, you know, a frequency. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And literally the light we're seeing right now all around us, right? And the colors we're seeing from that light is determined by how fast the up, down of that light is. Like the red I'm looking at right now, or this red that you're looking at, has slower up-downs comparatively to... Am I wearing any purple? I'm wearing blue? Kind of. This is blue. The point I'm trying to make is quite literally different colors have different frequency ranges. And as a result of that, we pick that up. We literally see sine waves. And depending on the sine wave we see, we determine the color from that. Isn't that... What the fuck? How, how, how is that a thing? What are, what are we What are we human beings even doing? We're taking, and the best part about that is as well, we're seeing like a, a slither of a band wave. Like literally a percentage of the band wave we know about. If we could see all of it, this world would be, I believe, pretty intimidating. I think it would be terrifying. Just be a little bit much. Well, but I guess if you evolve that way, it would be just normal again. Your brain would probably evolve coinciding with it to filter out the information you don't need. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is your view on mind? Is it something, just a flow of thoughts or something else? So we had a, an intention the other day that we just had the divine mind, you know. So for me, at least, at least the, the concept that makes most sense to me personally is that if there was a creator, like a, a God type of being, he would not create in the way that we understand creating. When we take, for example, wood and we turn it into a chair or furniture, would also not create with procreation, you know, having sex with something opposite of itself to create something as a, as a union of that. So the only way that, in my opinion, God would create, if he did at all, is mentally, you know, as an imagination or a dream or a meditation. And if anything, we are being animated as like a loving thought, right? So we are as thoughts of the divine mind. And the fact that we are here and living means that we are loved, at least in that analogy for me. Because if we weren't infinitely loved, think about yourself. And if you think about someone else, for example, while you're thinking about them, you're extending yourself from this place of love towards them, right? And wouldn't it be the same thing in the divine mind of God? The fact that we are is because he's extending his divine love towards us. And that's, that's my, <laughs> my theory of mind, friend, if you will. Airborne Army guy, thank you for joining us, my friend. It's so nice to see you. I'm doing well. How about you, friend? 
Hello, friends. Edmund, can you use mind control to mind itself? Can you use mind to control the mind itself? I don't think you need to, friend. Fortunately. Hello? Did you come? Yeah. My, my brother had to upload a project and his computer wasn't working, so I had to use mine just before the stream. Um, so you don't have to control your mind, friend. Technically, you can think of you controlling your body, right? So you can already lift your arms, flap your lips, like actuate your eyes, right? You, you know how to do these things. So a great way to control the mind is just through using your intention and your body with like breathing exercises, becoming aware of your breath. And then from that place, you'll get so much calm because you're not necessarily controlling your mind with your mind, but you're basically creating this pattern with inside of yourself that lets you know that you are in a safe space, you are calm, you are whatever. And in that way, you technically are controlling your mind with your mind because you control your mind or you control your intention through your body to like do a breathing exercise. And then because you feel good because of that breathing exercise, that good feeling introduces good thoughts to you. And then those good thoughts introduce good feelings. And you're basically like pushing yourself, nudging this loop to start, if you will. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Can... Do you smoke crack? I do not, friend. Thank you for asking, though. Uh, phantom limb syndrome. Phantom limb syndrome. Oh, 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 yes, yes, of course. So phantom limb syndrome can also be described, like you can kind of think of how I was talking about it as well, but it's like when you have lost a limb and you can still kind of feel like where it used to be. And you can, some, some people even have like phantom pain in that limb syndrome as well, where the, the, the limb they've lost is like an extreme excruciating pain where it's supposed to be. And they found that, can I say this? Yeah, they, I'm gonna say it because this is literally helping people. They find psychedelic treatments actually help people like come to terms with that stuff. Awkwardly lifting hands now. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Um, it's, it's nice to like think about it though. Javan, my friend, are you fine this Friday? I hope so as well. He only smokes crack on Tuesdays. <laughs> only on Tuesdays, dude. I, I like pace myself a little bit. Parenting is bonkers in general. Thank you so much. Thank you, friend. Uh, are you from Johan? No, I'm not friend. I'm from South Africa. Dropping uh, an agitating thought over time in mind is so difficult. It is. It is difficult. But at the end of the day, that's technically all you're ever doing, friend. Like genuinely think about it. No matter what it is you're experiencing, you have this awareness, like base level awareness. And then everything that you're like experiencing in this external world can be seen as like these ripples from the a little what did you get agitating stones if you will that you're dropping kunk, kunk, kunk. like oh i'm unworthy and you drop this stone and blah, 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 blah. you feel the little waves and you're like man this kind of sucks oh i'm feeling fantastic and i'm worthy of love huh, these ripples kind of feel nice and at the end of the day that's what we're constantly doing and we're using the same energy you know to drop pebbles we just have to kind of be aware of what pebbles we're trying to drop. Hey, Hades. It's nice to see you as well, friend. Sending you and your family so much love. Thank you, my friend. Unfortunately, absolutely true. Dropping an agitating thought over time in mind is so difficult. It's a nice string of sentences. <laughs> well, a string of words, though. Thank you for the hugs, Hades. And thank you for the silver, Matthias. It's nice to see you as well, my friend. How have you been? Stream is lagging for me. Hope your day has been good so far. I'm so sorry, friends. Yeah, like I think the stream is going to be laggy for everyone because of the place that I'm sitting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Noom, 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 noom. Uh, how are you feeling, Ben? Nervous, excited, sentimental, all the feels. I'm also curious, actually. Not just see, but also hear sine waves. Everything is a sine wave. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> um, stream is lagging for me. I hope your day is good so far. Thank you, friend. Oh, I'm not supposed to be in a permanent state of terror. Yeah, like maybe being in a permanent state of terror isn't great for us, you know. Maybe like this constant, almost like shouting of like, oh, look, this is something to be angry or scared about. This is not something to be angry or scared about. What can we do to stop being scared? <laughs> Just turn the TV off, yo. Stop looking at their bullshit. 
You see, the, the, the trippy thing about the fact that the media quite literally controls public consensus, and they know that as well, right? Like, I, I saw this one journalist, I think, say on live television once, like, oh, these social media influencers are trying to affect what people think or how people think, she said. And that's our job, she says. I'm like, goodness, woman, do you realize what it is you're saying? You're, you're exposing yourself. <sighs> because it's profitable. It's very profitable to have people that are scared because scared people try to, you know, mediate that. They believe that if they have enough of thing, be it money, be it relationship, be it physical position, physical possession, then this fear is going to subside. But that fear is something that's self-generated, you know. And if you're constantly planning from a place of fear, this ideal future for yourself, when you get there, you're going to be still planning for your ideal future and you won't be able to appreciate those things in those moments. And yeah, you can't get it. You can't let it run away from you. We only have three different color receptors in our eyes. Some animals have five plus. Imagine what colors they can see. Um, like every time I, I hear that, I think about those mantis shrimps. Those dudes see technicolor. So like 120 million different colors where human beings only see like 16 million. Imagine being able to see 120 million colors. Like you look at an average leaf and it looks like a, a psychedelic like light show. How cool would that be? Maybe we'll we'll be able to like integrate senses into the human being's experience at some point. Mm -mm -mm. God is a programmer, probably Hades. <laughs> Jovan, I am overly excited about the thought of having an offspring. We are trying to fit in as much as we can in the no in the next nine months. Trying to fit in? Are you going to try and like you know? Uh, like get some rest if you will go on vacation spend like some honeymoon time you know spend some time with each other before the baby comes is that what you mean yeah I'm just going to say mantis shrimp there we go yep 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 hey lisa it's nice to see you as well friend yo i wouldn't rule it out i wouldn't rule it out either <laughs> um you can use your mind to control your mind that is what self-control is Exactly, friend. Rina, the mantis shrimp, is one of the coolest animals on the planet. That little guy is beautiful, has some complex eyes, and is one of the most powerful punchers in the animal kingdom. Exactly, friend. Mantis shrimps, like me and my friends have, have talked so much about mantis shrimps because it is something that fascinates us. Imagine being an animal that beats things to death to eat yeah. them. Yeah. Actually just beats things to death. You go wherever it is your food is, like, and you should see, like, they're, they're, they're hectic. They, like, pry things out of their shells and then beat them. <laughs> That's just how they eat. They're just these hardcore assholes. And you can, like, kind of see their color or at least their propensity for color in their shells as well. They're beautiful creatures. Absolutely beautiful. Just super hardcore. I meant Johannesburg, friend. No, I, I'm not born in Johannesburg or from Johannesburg, friend. Super pumped. It is Friday. My team lead said we can dip out early from work if we finish our stuff early. Ooh, that sounds so nice, Dan. Man, that kind of makes me think of like back in back in like school when we would have like last period and the teacher would kind of just tell us you can do whatever it is you want to do, you know. You know, so it was so good. Like that was like for me of all of my school years, I think those were my favorite times. Mm, and we can see how colorful the mantis shrimp is. Can you imagine how much more colors he'd be able to see in itself? <sighs> imagine a mantis shrimp looking at itself in the mirror. I'm trying, I'm actually trying to imagine it. I'm like imagining looking through the eyes of a mantis shrimp at myself that is the mantis shrimp. And like my eyes are like actuating. And I like, ooh, imagine what you see in your own eyes. Oh, no, this is this is too much. <laughs> I need to stop. <laughs> uh, da -dum, da -dum. That's awesome, Dan. Thanks, Edmund. I'm headed to the shore, TM, for the fourth. So it'll be nice to get out early and get my bag packed. I think so as well. It sounds amazing, Dan. Man, I'm so happy for you, dude. Yo, it's okay uh, about the lag. The sorry felt so down. I am like, I'm genuinely sorry, dude. Like, I I wish I could just, and then it's like fixed because I know it can be, can be really grueling. So I appreciate you friends still spending this time with me, nonetheless, regardless. 
the dance stream this morning was packed, Esti. I'm so proud of you, friend. Thank you, Lisa. I love you, my friend. Thank you for being there and appreciating that energy with us. I'm stopping, Ryan, real quick. I have work. No, I love you so much. I love you too, Ryan. If you're not here anymore, friend, I'm sending you all the vibes. Love from India. Thank you, fun organization. Love from South Africa to you as well. Marine biology is fascinating. The mantis shrimp, the cuttlefish, and the cephalopods and orcas. Melt, I haven't experienced any lag of this stream. Okay. Stonks. I'm so happy to hear that, Jovan, because then it means it might not be my fault. Yay! <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. So, cuttlefish and cephalopods literally have cells that they can like pull open and close to like show different colors as well. You know how, like, one of my favorites is actually the, pre not the praying mantis, the chameleon. There we go. We call it the verkleer maniki in Afrikaans, chameleon in English. And these chameleons, the way they change their colors is literally through shifting crystals. They literally have crystal lattice structures in their skin that they, like, bend. And then as a result of that bend, it catches different light in turn reflecting different light what excuse me they also have you know counteracting what do you call those a non-dependent eyes i don't think that's how you say it sorry i'm bad but they can move their eyes you know unilaterally is that the word i don't know they can also like the, their tail kind of follows a golden ratio their little feet are so weird now i think about chameleon feet what are those things? They're, they're like oven mitts, but attached to their arms. And the way they move, their faces, their tongues, they literally have a mechanical bone launched, and this is probably a disgusting way of explaining it, mechanical bone launched uh, sticky piece of skin that it catches food with. Imagine explaining like an alien lands on your planet and it's like, what is one of your weirdest creatures? And you, and you explain to him, oh, there's this one creature that flings a part of its innards <laughs> towards something to pull it close to itself. Man, I would love to show chameleon videos to an alien. And then have him show me some of his weird creatures on his planet as well. Then a fantastic time. I haven't had any lag so far as well. Okay, Edmund, I think it might just be lame then. Imagine seeing smell. I mean, that's synesthesia, right? I can't, like, I do believe I have synesthesia, but it's for me the taste of music. I can, like, it's more, it's more texture that I taste than actual taste, but I have, like, a genuine sense of texture when it comes to listening to music. That's why, like, the whole, your taste in music, right? For me, it's quite literal in that way. And if I'm not feeling the taste or the, the flavor of the music I'm listening to, I'm like, straight up, nope, <laughs> I ain't eating this. Like, I'm like a, a spoiled kid. I stomp my feet and I'm like, nope, don't want it. Don't. <laughs> but then I'll, I'll sometimes I'll eat those as well. And we do that, right? Sometimes we want to eat different meals. Doesn't mean they're not good when we don't want to eat them. Just means that we don't want to eat them right now. Justin. Justin, my friend, I've missed you so much, man. I've missed you so much. I know you're out there in the world dadding it up, and I love you, man. I just, I hope you know that. Or taste color. Hmm. I feel in a lot of ways we already associate some tastes with color, right? Like if you think about jelly beans or stuff like that. You kind of anticipate the flavor you're going to really get, depending on the color you have. So I think in a way, we already taste color. Mm -hmm. Justin, how you been? Thank you, Jovan. Loving the energy. Thank you for the hugs, Justin. I appreciate that. I'm happy I'm here for a short visit. I see you. Love you, brother. There we go. I love your curls so much. Thank you. I have a peach. It grows this way right out of my head, friend. And Ryan, love you all, been busy. I know, I know, Justin. You don't have to apologize, friend. We're just so happy to have you here. We're excited to see you. It's like having you show up again, like to the to the party. Yeah. And everyone will be like, ah, running up, giving you hugs, and then we can dance together again. You radiate joy and happiness. Thanks. Thank you, friend. I hope that you can receive some of this radiant, radiated joy and happiness. Take it into yourself cultivate it a little bit and then sh sh give it back to someone else again 
spread the love, Fred. Mm -hmm. Got to get to a meeting. Talk to you later. Good seeing you all, not fam. We'll keep you all posted. As baby progress is made. Oh, oh my goodness. You see, that's that's the thing that trips me out the most. I mean, you're probably not here anymore, Ben. But the fact that we're going to now. So, I've met this person, right, in my life. Who... Like, I had this conversation about his wife with, right, got invested into his life. And now, him and his wife is having a child. And as we're going through this process of doing what it is we're doing, I'm going to see how this child gets eventually born. Hopefully, I get to see this child grow up as well. Imagine 18 years later still doing this. Being able to, like, see <laughs> Ben's daughter, like, graduate high school or whatever, or even go to college. Ben popping in like, oh, my little girl just graduated college. Me losing my mind. Has it been 22 years already, Ben? <laughs> Why am I like, I'm, I'm spending way too much mental power thinking about the future right now. I love it though. Mm, hey to you as well. Um, I'm sad my kids are going to their dad today. Sorry to hear that, Scarmelia. For how long are they going? He's Ben. Hi and bye, Ben. Stream has been smooth. I got to go. I have a have a lack of day. I knew you were a South African dude. I think I asked you on the Discord server. I'm not sure if you if you replied though. Um, hey Scar, you'll get a lot of packing done. Enjoy your break. You deserve it, and that's an important thing with a relationship with Dad. I know it's not easy. I'm also happy. I mean, like at the end of the day, having having time spent with your father as a child. Is, is is gonna be good for you no matter how you slice it. So think about the good it will do for your kids. Mm, I am alien. I am alien too, Toasty. It's so nice to have you here, my friend. Platypus would probably be the weirdest creature I can think of. If somebody from the deep, uh, if not something from the deep oceans, yeah. Platypuses have snake venom as mammals. They feed milk. Not through nipples. They lay eggs. They have bills. And they're, I think, one of only two mammals left that kept the, like, egg-creating gene, if you will. Because technically, human beings also create eggs. We just no longer pop them out. <laughs> Imagine! Oh, no, I, I'm going to stop imagining that right now. I, I, I imagine for a split second human beings laying eggs and then it scarred me. <laughs> uh, you are delightful. Do you have synesthesia? Maybe a little bit. Like with the, the crunchy, with the sound. Not, not much though. Like, like, okay, so things wrong with me, if you will. I'm dilex dilexic. Yes, perfect. I'm dilexic. I... <laughs> <laughs> dyslexic <laughs> i i have tinnitus so constant yeah. i've like find the range i've found the range if you will it's like two thousand like twenty thousand to twenty thousand like twenty three thousand basically hertz constant scream at the back of my head i have stigmatism or stigmatism it's like when your lenses of your eyes are like kind of bent so if you look at light I don't see like a single source of light. I see these furls. It's like, how can you explain it? Um, imagine if everywhere you looked, instead of just seeing like a light source, you saw someone that took that light source as like an ink and then made like these stripes. <laughs> All like, up, like usually above it and below it. And then if I turn my head, these spikes like shift on that axis as I turn my head. So, yeah. <laughs> and then a little bit of crunchy sound if I'm listening to, like, bass. I can, like, literally feel, like, satiated. I'll, I'll be, like, mm. <laughs> listening to some good music. Hello, Arian. I'm astronaut. There we go. Man, I actually saw this, like, bong that friend made, the one that made my bong. She made a bong of, like, a space dude, like a literal astronaut. And an alien, like, floating on the bunk together, smoking a joint. And it's pretty cool. I have synesthesia with a few numbers. That's interesting. So, what synesthesia effects do you experience? If you, if you look or experience those numbers, then I'm curious, Justin. 
Do you believe luck or bad luck? No, not really. Not. Uh, it's it's a difficult one. But I don't really believe in it because, in my opinion, believing in good luck or bad luck, I'm basically saying that there is some sort of victimship in the world, you know? Like if I'm someone that has good luck, for example, and there are people out there in the world that has bad luck, then that means they're being a victim just because of this thing that they have that is bad luck. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I do think that everything happens for a reason, and we learn the lessons that we learn, and the things happen in our lives that happen because we don't learn the things that we're supposed to learn sometimes as well. So no, I don't believe in bad luck. For the same reason, I don't believe in karma. Again, I, I believe you're basically creating this victim mentality. You look like a druggie. Why, thank you, Pineapple Wolf. I appreciate that, friend. Uh, Lane, Justin, Siobhan, Management, and Ryan. Holy cow, Ryan! <laughs> hey, Beltmore. You good, bruv. I'm good, Dad Flaps. It's nice to see you here, friend. I don't think I've ever seen you tune into these streams. It's nice to have you here. Dad Flaps, to you friends who don't know, is also a streamer. He has, I don't know what you call the game, dude, but he has this, man, I'm like trying to, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a Guitar Hero game where he has like four buttons here, then thumb buttons, then he has knobs that he has to turn. And I'm not sure if he has any more inputs, but like it's ultra chaos. Like looking at that dude play that game makes me feel like... I'm, um, or he's something else, you know, like that, that's not human. What is, how, how, how is that even possible? Like watching him, what are you, hey, I, I just, I recommend you watch it. If you want to know, go check out Dad Flaps on, on Reddit. Dan too, uh, lol, what, how does the dragon look like? I, I, like this, apparently, I mean, I'm okay with it. If, if that is going to be the, the image that I bring to the druggy community, good for them. Uh, I find synesthesia fascinating, but I do not have it. I associate some music with colors, but not to the extent of synesthesia. Of synesthesia. That's interesting. Man. So, will you like have a general feeling of like, mm, this color or this, this song makes me feel or think of the color red, but it would be like, yeah, I can feel the color red from the song. You wouldn't be like flooded with the feeling or the the imagery of red in saying that or listening to that song. Thank you for the all seeing up as well, my friend. Alexa, play my heart will go on. I'm sorry to all of you friends who have Alexas. You've been bamboozled. Like what? <laughs> that even mean you've Uh We got all the friends. Yes, we do. Platypus milk. Platypus milk, dude. Platypus and uh, again, they they literally create in their fur. They like ex. They, it's so weird. It's like they have these porous. Oh, this is this gonna be disgusting. They have these porous little uh, like skins where they they excrete their milk, and it basically excretes their milk into their fur, and then the baby kind of on that fur to eat the milk. What? 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 <laughs> you know, when the platypus was first discovered, people didn't actually believe it was a real thing. They were like. Uh, they were trying to investigate how someone stitched other animals together to make this thing. And they were like, actually, this is just a real thing. Snake venom. In the back legs. It has snake venom in, in the back of its legs. Why? Like, evolutionary, if you look at how far away those <sighs> splits happened in just our evolutionary chain, it's wild that that dude kept his venom. What a trip. It's so cool. Alexa, kiss melt more. Oh, thank you, friend. <laughs> my platypus says you're weird too. Uh, I would probably agree with your platypus, my friend. Humans laying eggs. Dude, dude, I, I had to stop myself so fast. <laughs> we got your bud and Edmund and Justin and Ryan and management and Dan and Lane. And who am I missing? Hey, Magopo here is here as well. We have Dad Flaps. Um, we have Pineapple Wolf. It's nice to have him here as well. A politician, a librarian, a dancer, a murderer, a cat on catnip, dolphins being stung by poisonous fish. Mm -hmm. Did I miss something that you said, Jovan? I think I might have. Mm -mm -mm. Yo, my brain went to the same place. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, that's the thing as well. Like, people want to judge and people want to try and, like, put people in a box, right? As we as we try to do all the time. We think if we're like, okay, yeah, you are this, you are druggy, you know, and then you know, okay? This person has these druggy qualities. And, and you think in your egoic consciousness that you know someone if you've labeled them. But no... No, 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 not at all. Not even close. I don't even know who I am. How could you possibly? I'm watching chickens eat avocado. So... I believe they'll be okay. We don't have Ben here anymore. <laughs> Uh, also, an ag, an astigmatism haver. There we go. So you know Magopo. It is like I believe genuinely, my astigmatism is like basically having built-in psychedelic, like filters in my eyes. So I'm not too too trippy about it because I did consider getting myself glasses to fix my astigmatism, which is basically like glasses that straighten the light out as it hits your retinas. But nah, I don't need to. Mm, we got milk toasty. <laughs> yeah, we got that as well. Magopo, have a good. You have a good dog. I haven't. Have I seen Magopo's dog? I might have. Oh, clown. Oh, yeah, you look like you're homeless. Thank you, friend. I mean, I think I'm doing pretty well for a homeless person. Technically, I am. So you're right, actually. And the clown thing, interestingly enough is actually something that I do kind of agree with, but not necessarily the word clown, more the word jester. Mm. Like, I feel, if anything, like, the my counter side would be the jester. No, 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 no. We always got mouth. Yes, you do, friend. And I hope, I hope to continue doing that as well. And you will always, at least, you know, once a day, have me in some way, shape or form. Like, we'll, we'll always be able to be there for each other, at least once in a day. At least, you know, to touch base. Just touching base. Making sure, hey, you know, you, I love you. I'm showing up for you. Know that. Know that always. Synesthesia seems so interesting to me. I'd love to experience it, though, some kind of simulation. Through some kind of simulation. Hmm. How would you simulate it? I'm trying to think now. Like, I'm trying to... Actually, I know how you would be able to do that. You basically get like a, a pad that you can put on your tongue. And then this pad basically has like a, a wire running into it that can control the release of certain chemicals. So, man, I'm thinking, I'm thinking you can do it maybe with electricity as well. And then you can hook that up to the, like the, the beat of your music. And then as, as you're listening to this music, just through your ears, you can also stimulate your tongue. And in turn, you would technically be experiencing some form of synesthesia. I think that would be pretty cool. Yep, someone is rushing right now to develop this idea and give me no credit. You do that, Brian. You do that. Just send me one in the mail if you're done. Uh, hey, Flaps, I'm doing well. I hope you're well as well. There we go. No, not wrong. Just a verity. I have light astigmatism and tinnitus, uh, but my ringing comes from a couple decades of punk shows without proper hearing protection. I hear you, I have a preach. Um, for me, it's been like for as long as I've been alive. Like I kind of got born, or at least like the, the first time I realized that that wasn't something that other people were experiencing. Like I asked my mom, what does like it mean when I hear these loud screams in my head? And she was like, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. What, what are you experiencing, dude? So, like, I kind of had to do reach for myself. And I learned at a very young age that I have this thing called tinnitus. And there's pretty much nothing you can do. But that's also okay. I believe, again, like for the same thing with the astigmatism, that the tinnitus is basically this frequency that plays in the back of my brain constantly. Um, how... Now, what makes him look homeless? I mean, I'm I'm wearing like a kind of a raggedy scarf. Uh, I, I'm not well shaved. I have long hair. I look a little bit homeless, just a just a wee bit. Um, yo, I have a, a stigmatism too. 
we have a stigma to some homies. What are the odds? Um, when I see numbers in my head, uh, they have a certain color associated with it. Like seven is yellow and three is reddish orange. That's interesting. Nah, mine doesn't do that. <laughs> mine doesn't do that. <laughs> like I'm like I'm prodding my brain. Like I'm uh, so my brain does this thing and it's like pokes it and like does thing. I'm like hmm, pokes my brain. Yeah, mine doesn't do that. <laughs> uh, I have one bar of service. I think I'm behind. Maybe a little bit lame, but you're still loved, my friend. We're here with you. Mm, they are hiding all around us. Ah, oh, so sweet, Meltmore. I love you, my friend. I love you, dude. Like, the stuff that you can do. Uh, lol, Dad Flaps. I love the name. Yeah, Dad Flaps is the more more PG version or version of his name, actually. And yeah, like, the, the official one is Poop Flaps, I believe, actually. Right? I think it is. I do not believe in fate, either. Uh, I just think that good things come when you are ready and when you are paying attention. It may pass you several times before you finally notice it. But I'm just glad I'm paying attention when I do. That's how I found. That's how I found my inner peace, I'm guessing, is what you would finish my sentence with saying. So, I do actually agree with what you're saying, friend. Mm. Pay attention. So, I believe that if anything, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. You know, you're preparing yourself in whatever field it is you want to work in. And then when the opportunity arises for you to do something in that field, you, you do that, right? And people can say, oh, you're so lucky. But if you weren't preparing yourself for that thing to happen, then you would not have been there when the opportunity arose in the first place. So in that way, in that definition, then there may be luck. Uh, you'll regret the comment when you find out what a dad flap is. Believe me. <laughs> and you see, I knew it, dude. I knew it. Uh, is it like a Terry Fold? It's exactly like a Terry Fold, dude. Uh, or a holdy hold. <laughs> a Jerry girl. <laughs> it's like a Jerry girl. <laughs> no. No. Thank you for the helpful friend. I appreciate it. Platypie are not real. Karma is like cause that whoa 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 karma is like cause that becomes the effect itself x if you work hard and study for example i guess if you work hard and study it becomes good at grades at the end of the action of karma if you if you drug it becomes cancer as cause of it becomes effect cycle of life uh, i understand what you were trying to say i just feel like a there's maybe it's a few typos yeah, I do agree with what you're saying. Again, the whole uh, luck, if anything, is when preparation meets opportunity, right? Let's say, again, your example of studying. If you prepare yourself and the opportunity to prove how hard you've been studying arises when you write your test, then quite literally you're going to be more lucky because you study, right, if anything. That karma. No way, I have mild synesthesia, my mom too. What type of synesthesia do you have, friends? Well, here, my bad, it's okay. Hoping, hopping off, nice to catch a stream, bro. Take it easy. Mm, I'm taking it so easy, dude. Taking it so, so easy. Take it easy, but take it. Just make sure you take it. How are your, how are your little baby bite marks today, Mel? Ah, uh, they're doing better. They're doing better. I, I added some, like, peroxide to this wound today. Man, that was not fun. But I felt like it was getting painful, you know, just for being there. So I was like, nah, 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 nah. Pain means infection or something. So I was like, peroxide on it. It was an, an extreme amount of pain for a second, but now it's better. <clears throat> no, ain't a clown. Clowns don't make me smile. <laughs> a jester, maybe. Toasty. What do you feel about that one, dude? See your flaps by Flappy Man. By Flappy Man, indeed. Watching my chickens eat spaghetti is my favorite. Chickens eating spaghetti. Man, we've never thrown spaghetti to our chickens. Now I want to as well. Melt more is around us. Yes, friend. It's wherever you want it to be at the end of the day as well. And if you really want to look for it, you're going to find it as well. Got born. <laughs> that phrase broke my brain. But it's actually pretty accurate. <laughs> I was like, I don't really have much choice in it at the end of the day. Five is blue. Maybe um, that's how you could make taste division. It would be a one way to do it. I'm, I'm not sure if it would be that good. 
because it's either going to be like chemicals being constantly released onto your tongue, which is not exactly something that you want, or it's going to be electrical stimulation. But electrical stimulation can go only that far. And realistically, it would be more efficient and easier to implement technology like that with something like Neuralink than it would be to like have an external thing attached to your tongue to try and stimulate it like that. But yeah, that's going to be a, a whole of the story. I'm like genuinely trying to prepare myself for when that's going to be a rea reality because I, it's, yeah, it's much, it's, it's very much you, no, you friend. Uh, my servers went there. My servers went there. I'm going to get off now. Good to see you all. Peace and love, my friends. Thank you for joining us, Lane. We appreciate you like an aqua dope. Hmm. I'm not sure what you mean by like an aqua toasty, unfortunately. A little darker than aqua. Oh, the color. Actually, greenish blue toasty. Mm. Darker than aqua. Man, that is really fascinating me. Does that help? <clears throat> I'm curious about that as well. Because like, if you want to think about Neuralink, and at least if we're talking about detecting or having synesthesia with our senses. When it comes to math, man, I want to say a million things at the same time. Ugh, okay. So, the current Neuralink that is having FDA approval done right now for human trials has 1,000 in, 1,000 out puts, which means that it can either read, you know, uh, like the firing of that region or it can input an electrical signal to that region <sighs> the reason this technology i believe is 100 percent essential to humanity just for what it is right now is because it's going to enable people that have like completely lost the function of their bodies think stephen hawking think all of the other millions of people who don't have the capacity I'm not, I'm not sure if there's millions. I wonder actually what the number on that is. Would your friends be willing to, to like do some research for me or like do a Google search of how many people are quadriplegics, like have no use of any of their limbs? And like we've already been implementing technology that is like very invasive and kind of like hectic, like literal ports on people's brains. And then these like big devices go onto those ports. But then people that have no move, like no movement capacity within their own bodies can literally move robot arms type things on screens feed themselves drink water themselves like that is that is mind-blowing imagine not having any functionality over your own like existence having one surgery and being able to communicate with your your family again being able to feed yourself again being able to drink water again and realistically this technology can go as far as to literally put a suit on you right oh your limbs don't work we'll just put this exoskeleton over you you can kind of move your shit around walk around for, because you have this connection to it and then after like we basically solve this problem this this problem of humanity not being able to experience its humanity we can then use this as a creative tool because in and again coming back to the numbers while i was talking about talking about it in the first place if you have 1000 in and outputs the average calculator has like 20 inputs, right? So you can quite literally use only like 20 of your thousand inputs, outputs to route it to an actual calculator in your brain. Perfect math in your brain all of the time. You see, there's so much to it as well. Like I'm, it's a, it's, it's a bit much. It's so much to wrap our heads around because what we're going to be, be doing to ourselves as humanity is we're going to be equipping ourselves in such ways that we're going to be almost unrecognizable from what humanity used to be. And we're already doing that in a lot of ways. And you friends can be like, oh, like, I mean, I'm, a lot of my friends like, oh, okay. I want to say a thousand things at the same time. I'm feeling so much. This is a sensitive topic because what we're suggesting is literally not we suggesting what what this technology is suggesting is 
Like literally taking a slice out of your skull and then putting a little processor slash sender slash receiver into that skull. Attach those little wires to areas on your brain, right? That is just a concept that is wild. It's really out there. But we don't necessarily think of our phones in that same way. It's still this extension of ourselves, right? This thing that we, we carry with us. When I was living in China, I wasn't carrying a wallet at all because my phone was everything. It was my wallet, it was my chatting device, it was my GPS, it was the thing that I was using to watch videos. And we're moving into an age more and more of that, where people aren't going to need anything besides their phone to like get basic tasks done. Think about the amount of functionality that a cell phone has. Look at what we're doing with a single cell phone right now in this moment. <sighs> okay, yeah, that's it, it blows my mind every single time I think about it. Now, we have a thousand inputs and a thousand outputs into this technological scape that we're already trying to interact with. How we use it now is with two inputs. It's kind of slow, you know? Like this is <laughs> the fastest my fingers go. <laughs> With your brain, oh goodness, oh my. With a thousand different inputs and outputs, you would literally be able to, and this is this is the reason it fascinates me, and I, I'm very inspired about technology, is just imagine how it would equip us to create things. Like think about, for, for example, you know, we can do this right now. You can imagine like this beautiful scene with these mountainscapes and this like gorgeous sunlight coming over. And as this gorgeous sunlight comes coming over, there's like this purple hue uh, that's being cast by the like shadows of the mountains, right? And as I was explaining this to you, you friends had this mental image being generated. Each and every single one of us had a different mental image generated. But if we had the capacity to actually just use that information that we generate and put it into a computer, like imagine how much, I know like maybe the much isn't what's supposed to be important, but how accurately I feel more importantly, we could create the things we see in our mindscapes. It fascinates me. It, it makes me so excited. Sometimes hard work hardly works. I'm not so sure about that, friend. Mm -mm -mm, I miss you, Lane. Oh, there we go. That's beautiful. We miss you, Lane. We really do, friend. That's how I found you because I was paying attention. But well, Boo, thank you for the joy this morning in the Southern USA. Thank you, friend, for joining us here as well. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, why are you technically homeless? Uh, I'm not technically homeless. I'm living with my parents, but I'm not paying for a home of my own. So um, I don't have a home, genuinely. Right? That's not my home. It's my parents' home. So homeless, you know. Yeah. <laughs> three is red. I don't trust three. You don't trust three, Toasty. I am, I kind of like three, man. Three is one of my, it's one of my like special numbers, dude. Seven is yellow sometimes. Eleven is white. The rest I don't don't really have colors. So that's really interesting. I mean, you could technically go up to extreme numbers. Maybe the rest of your your colors is going to be caught up in like the multis of billions, and you have to visualize that entire number before the color is going to show up. Uh, have I just given you something to do for the rest of your life that you'll never be able to finish doing? <laughs> Interesting. I want to know more. Mm. Uh, uh, lol, it's good, Red Toasty. It's a good Red Toasty. Ventique bug. Hey, Melt, my man. How's things? Things are well, friend. How are things with you? It's been a long time since you've been tuning in. Like, how's life been treating you? Where have you been? Any Any news you would like to share with us? One in... 50 people living with paralysis what one in 50 people 5.4 million people living with paralysis imagine imagine we have the technology we have the capacity to create a significantly better life experience for 5.4 million people how could we not you know do you ever wonder if we perceive colors the same like if your yellow is my red yeah i think about that all the time actually peachy little lemon like 
what I'm curious about, you know, and this is a very shotgun theory. I don't believe in it. It's just, you know, a weird thing to consider. But what if we see different colors for everything, you know, but because we get taught as children, this thing is this color. And on top of that, we all have the same favorite color. We just have different words for it in our minds. Huh? What a trip would that be? I don't believe that, but what if? <laughs> I couldn't find global stats, but 1 in 50 people are living with spinal paralysis in the US. That's crazy, yo. Thank you so much for helping me research as well, friends. I really do appreciate that. Hello. Hello. Uh, look at her. Look at how dirty she is. Look at how dirty she is. Oh, you little beauty, you. Like I. Oh, no. No. Oh, she, she, she's not taking no for an answer. She's like, I want to be right on top of you. <laughs> You're so dirty. You're so dirty. Fine. I submit. I submit. I accept this experience. Oh, I read it wrong. Sorry. No worries, my friend. Stephen Hawking had ALS. My best friend died of ALS. He would have loved becoming a cyborg. I'm sure he would have, friend. Like, you just imagine being able to create. Like, imagine being, a, like, this is now a radical, just like, aha moment for me. I'm trying to picture being completely paralyzed, laying in a hospital bed, looking at the ceiling, you know, and, or wherever they point me, and having that as my lived experience, and then getting one surgery, and then being able to make works of art. Huh? Make actual works of art. <sighs> like that's, man, that's life changing. That's sad. Wish we could fix it. Quick maths in your brain. Quick, the quickest of maths in your brain, dude. <laughs> uh, PC is the master race. Yeah, PC is the master race. And <laughs> you've got fast fingers. Uh, Peachy Lemon, I talk about this all the time. There are a lot of people that think I'm crazy when I say it. I don't think you're crazy. I think it's a fun thing to consider as well. It's called the transmitter. Thank you, friend. That's the right word for it, yeah. Neuralink is a seriously exciting concept. I just don't trust the people who control it. I know that is a scary thing, Toasty. But the same thing goes for our cell phones and for our bank accounts, right? And for our, like, social security and for our insurance. Like, we, we have these services and we have these companies that provide these things. But we're not living in constant fear of them being exploited because we can expect a certain level of security. Like, people's bank accounts still get hacked, people's phones still get hacked. But that's not the common thing that we like are constantly in fear of because it's not something that happens to everyone. Like I feel, and I, I've, I've like me, me and my friends have like had some genuine chats about this as well. You could technically foolproof it in a way where the only information that you allow yourself to receive, you have to have like a certain level of latency from your phone itself. And you should be able to like query instructions, especially if it's instructions that can have like detrimental effects, if you will. So instead of just kind of like compiling whatever it's supposed to, right? If you like are scared of, for instance, someone mind controlling you, you can think of their mind control signal as something that has to come from a server first, hit your phone, and then gets uploaded to your brain. Where the things you usually do, like with interacting with your computer, for example, if you're, inter if you're like making a work of art, that is like going to be a less latent connection versus having a connection to something like that. If that makes any sense. It's going to be difficult though. It's, yeah, it's going to be scary as well. But at the end of the day, if you think of it like as a node-based system where people can also technically support each other in this node-based system, we could technically use each other as our, as our antiviruses, if that makes any sense. Mm, there is already technology to do remote surgery where the surgeons uh, is controlling a robot. I know, friend. Wow, literal. Yeah, friend. It's it's crazy, and it's actually more accurate and efficient. Exactly. Like, and what's going to happen right now as well is that these surgery robots are going to be 
like used by these you know surgeons and they're going to in that being used record everything that it is they're doing run that recording the imagery they have the movements they've had through neural nets and then at the end of the day robots are going to do surgeries exponentially better than a human being would ever be able to and we're moving rapidly into that future it's actually yeah here we go look up neil harabison the human cyborg the human iborg i'm guessing cyborg uh he has cyborg extensions in his brain so he can hear color oh goodness i would definitely want to see that this video neil harbison that looks oh that sounds so cool right my dad dismisses it because science says no but we don't know uh it's perceived the same yeah so like basically you can think of it if anything if it does work like that, as a wiring in your own brain, as like an association, right? So you're basically all receiving the same wavelengths of color. And if you were to say that that wavelength is the color, instead of saying the thing you see is the color, then technically, scientifically, it would disprove it. Mm, we cannot multiple, multiple robots and multiple different celestial bodies we control multiple robots and multiple different celestial bodies yeah <laughs> already as it is i love all that quantum physics stuff like that me too friend and if you like want to really think about the state of our minds as it is right now you can think of it as being in a quantum state as well where the thing that you say basically triggers something with inside of myself or the seeing of something triggers something with inside of yourself almost on a quantum level like this thing gets triggered as you see it or as you see it this thing gets triggered but it's like happening so fast and with so much nuance that it could literally be our brains are quantum computers mm, dance i want to give her a tongue raspberry <laughs> she would probably look at you funny but i think she would love it she's like completely knocked out i'm happy like, my, my pants are getting dirty, but at least she's not devouring my flesh. Uh, when will you be dancing again? I was literally dancing this morning, friend. So, maybe tomorrow again? I'll see how I'm feeling. Learning to accept, submit to life is key to inner peace. I know, friend. I, I really do know. I, I just... I make myself forget sometimes. He dances in the AM, sunrise at Africa time. That's the one, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you telling him as well. About 8.30 mountain time, I think. <laughs> it's like basically 7 AM mountain time right now. Like it kind of pops over like 7 minutes past 7. But when we were starting this whole process, it was only popping over at like 6 so we started dancing at 5 a.m. I'll probably go back to doing that when it becomes summer again. Yes, exactly. We're for the favorite colors, right? It's a trip. I don't actually believe so either, but it is a cool thought. I like it as well. Uh, and like I've also had the same experience with my dad when I told him that, where he was like, nah, nah. But I can live without my bank account or phone. I can live with nothing. But if you hack my brain, like that's the thing as well. Toasty, I understand that it, it sounds like a very scary thing. First and foremost, I don't believe this thing would have the capacity to literally overwrite your entire brain because just think about how powerful your brain is, dude. And then secondly, this thing also has a battery life and a battery life no longer than a single day's worth of use. So even if you got hacked, you just don't charge it, you know. And it could continue to not charge it, and then it just won't work anymore. And having it removed is also something that is completely possible to do. And that is something I, I think should be known, if you will. It's an important factor to take into consideration. Because you can take it out, and it, it doesn't affect your living experience. So even if you're like, you get the surgery, and you're like, hmm, let's see if I can use this technology to further my craft and you feel the use of this technology takes something away from your craft and you're like nope don't want it anymore you have it taken out so toasty what's your favorite color and favorite number mm, we're trying to to be like a little bit of a uh, detectives about this see if we can find some correlations 11 and i'm a fan of purple lately i've been a fan of purple lately as well dude but more as a color that i want to see not as my favorite color if that makes any sense like i want to 
I want to like have a purple pashmina and I want to like paint my walls purple or something, you know, that type of want to see purple. Minus three in blue. How about you, Joe? Oh, three turned blue for me for a little. <laughs> you got glitched, dude. Dude, you still dancing? Yeah, friend. I am still dancing. We danced this morning. We had a really cool dance session this morning where we listened to a new artist. It was a lot of fun. But you see it as a red as well, Toasty. Yeah, it's just I had like a little bit of a flicker. Mine is green, and I honestly don't know what my favorite number is. So, like, it's interesting as well, because my favorite number is three, and it is green. And, like, when, when Justin said his favorite number is three as well, I was like, hmm, curious. Uh, I just like a shimmer. I'm not sure how to describe it. Like a constant, faint, persisting hallucination. That is really cool. I think that's the perfect way to explain it. Trevor, hello, friends. Uh, I made it this time. I have, have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so much, Trevor. I hope you have a wonderful day as well, my friend. Have you been in love, friend? I wonder if I ever will. Hmm. Yeah, I think I've been in love. I think you will as well, friend. Like, this life is a an ever-giving experience at the end of the day. All you have to do is wait. Mm. If it's going to be luck, it's going to be the same thing, right? Preparation meets opportunity. So ask yourself right now, what is it you feel you have to prepare for when you're going to be in a relationship in the future? And I think if you can identify that, if you feel like there's things that need to be prepared for, then being prepared when you find that relationship at the end of the day is going to make you all the more equipped to completely be present for it and make it something that will last. Good to see you today, Melt family. Good to see you as well, Christine. Thank you for joining us, my friend. COVID has made people smell a switchboard. COVID has made people smell switchboard get mixed up. Yeah, smell and taste. My pants are so dirty. <laughs> I like the numbers three and four and the color gradient from deep purple to blue to green. <clears throat> Hard to pick a favorite. Uh, I kind of gravitate to an area on the spectrum. Mm. Like maybe if you could, like like what we're doing right now and trying to select a favorite color, you're taking this circle and putting it right over one color. You would rather put it in one of those gradients, right? Like a purple... Uh, blue green and like over that that like transitioning of colors put that circle right over that um, but um, but um, bum, bum, makes sense my mom's fruit my mom's fruit and smelly and fish smells have gotten switched what she smells fruit when she she eats fish and she smells fish when she tries to eat fruit that is weird that is real weird man what an experience that must be uh, I'm sorry. I'm not sure if I should be sorry. I mean, that sounds like a divine and unique experience in my opinion. I'm not sure if it's something that would be only enjoyable. Like, I'm, I'm thinking, would you eat more fish if it smelled like apples? I think I would. Does it still taste like fish, though? I'm curious. Hey, G-Unit OG. It's nice to see you, my friend. Uh, hey, Mr. Goodbye. It was good to see you. <laughs> it's nice to see you, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Those are my favorite colors, Siobhan. Like, I feel the same thing. I genuinely feel the same thing, actually, with the, the purple, blue, green. Because it's like this, again, the spectrum, right? Especially, I like the, the purple especially because it's something that I associate with a higher state of consciousness as well. What are we planning for day 200? I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe after day 200, a few days of silence. Hmm? What do you friends think about that? I'm thinking about maybe taking a day or two of complete silence. I've never taken a vow of silence in my entire life. And I feel we've definitely said a lot. So maybe saying nothing will be a very divine experience in its own. How's it made? Lacquer in honors. Lacquer in honors for you, my friend. I don't know what that means, but I go for the good. My favorite color is Globana. 
dude, Lil Bama for some reason is that that color of your little avatar's hoodie for me. I don't know why. Uh, I do not trust three, by the way, lol. I was a really bad job. <laughs> like, the, it seems now especially that way because you have all of us three showing up. Like, oh, I don't trust three three stars showing up. What? What, Toasty? You don't trust threes? Hmm? How about you see threes all around? <laughs> Bro, I beg to say, dude. Uh, I, so, uh, actually, let me tell you about the little bit of experiment on self I did today. So, grapefruits have this chemical in it. Not sure what it's called, do forgive me. But it basically boosts bioavailability of anything that you have in your body. So, I made myself a big glass of juice with like four grapefruits. Uh, I drank all of that. But like while I did that, I was already feeling this very surreal experience of like being aware of my body and this tingling sensation in my stomach where it was like almost like it was burning me a little bit. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to take this experience or this feeling inside of myself. I'm going to go and do breathe, uh, breathwork exercise with that. And I did that and it was a surreal experience. It got to the point where with my hands on my stomach, it felt like there was this void being created within myself that was like collapsing into itself. Like imagine a, a black hole created inside of my solar plexus. And I felt like it was at the same time my like core, the, the energy source that I have was at the same time giving so much and also trying to absorb as much as it possibly can. And I was like, what in the hell is happening to me? And this was like getting into like the deeper parts of the breath with exercise where you go for longer, hold for as long as you can as well. And this was happening on the out breath. So I was feeling like I had this like void of air inside of myself. And then that feeling like almost be it became this concentrated energy with inside of my solar plexus. And then I became so consciously aware of that and I started trying to move that up into my being. And it was, yeah, it was surreal. And then... After this this experience, I took a little bit of cannabis, well, like a little bit, like a, a, a minuscule amount, because I was like, I wonder if it's going to do the same thing <laughs> to the cannabis, right? If it's going to make it more bioavailable, don't want to overdo it. No, you toasted. <laughs> you toasted, my friend. Um, and hey, thank you for joining us, Candace. It's so nice to see you. Deep fried my <laughs> We're all beautiful friends. I like the number three, too like the trinity exactly like the trinity friend that's what it's for me as well like when you live in a way where the things you think the things you say and the things you do are in union that's when you're going to live a good life as well and that's what like the three for me is just about that at the end of the day i burned my arm on a pan so uh, i hold my hat arm my arm up it's smiling Oh, I understand what you mean. <laughs> when I put it down, it's frowning. That's hilarious. I'm so sorry to hear that, my friend. I hope you heal. Like, I'm, I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be able to give you advice. You're the mom. You would know. But the fruit that tastes like fish. Yeah, that is, that I, that's why I stopped talking about that. Because I didn't want to, you know, bring that up if that's the case. Imagine biting into an apple and you taste fish. Like that, oh, goodness. That, ooh, that. No, I can't. Oof, you okay? I'm okay, friend. And I'm pretty sure you were talking to Candace. My husband uh, has fasting. He meditated in our meditation room with no light for two days. Only water. Hmm. Man, that's crazy. That is some good dedication. I would love actually to be able to do something like that. That would be cool. You would just read the comments and not say anything. You might have to do it on the you show. Probably. Probably I have to do another you show because distance socializing would expect me to socialize. But if my face is in the you show, then it should be okay. But yeah, just dead silence and just reading comments. I wonder, I wonder how that would be perceived because I do believe you friends would then be more prompted to talk amongst each other, and then I would just be able to be this like observer of this, and I would love to do that. That's intense. It was, dude. It was intense, man. Like, I felt like at one point I was destroying myself. Like, I was keeping this out breath. And with this, like, feeling of, like, this black hole inside of myself, I was like, am I going to be completely collapsed into myself if I continue doing this? And I was just like, hold. And I was like, no, I won't collapse. I'll keep myself strong. And it was, yeah, it was really cool. 
She doesn't like fish, so and now she doesn't like fruit. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. Man, Peachy, that sounds like it sucks. No talking, etc. Uh, I wouldn't do it. Me alone with my thoughts. I just think about cleaning and if the kids are okay and my husband is still alive. Uh, I mean, like, that's the thing as well, right? It's kind of thinking about those things to the point where you're completely exhausted with thinking about them and then transcending that. That's, like, where, why you would, like, try and, like, stunt yourself a little bit. Not say anything so you can kind of deal with your own stuff. That sounds like heartburn melt. Grapefruit does that to me too. JK, JK. It wasn't, like, I've, I've experienced plenty of heartburn. It literally felt... Like this thing was melting me. It felt like it was this. So usually heartburn for me, it's like I feel it about about here. I'm like, oh, right, and you swallow. None of that. It was just this radiant thing, like, like almost like it was vibrating my being. I was like, damn. <sighs> do want to do it some more. But I'm probably going to build tolerance to grapefruit juice. <laughs> so I should wait or something. Um... I think a vow of silence would be really cool. I've done it for only a day before, and it was a great experience. I, th I think so, man. Like, I think it would be a lot of fun. Because at the end of the day, we're, we're changing our patterns, right? Be it even for a moment, be it for an entire day, be it for a month. We're trying to, like, change the way that we usually think we're se things are supposed to be done and how we feel things are going to be continue to being done. So like if I if I spend a day or two or even a week like in complete silence, I think from that place I'll I'll think so many things that I won't express that I'll almost consolidate and get to a point where I know the things that I do want to say because I've not been able to say them for so long. Huh? Like that is that is how I'm like thinking about it right now and it makes me happy. <laughs> I have a hard time finding meditation time. Mom, 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 mommy, mom, mommy, mom, mom. I want to talk with my inner being. Little hobbits, leave me be. <laughs> you need to find maybe like this. This is a suggestion. Candace, do ignore me completely if you don't agree. Maybe stand up or wake up like at 3.33 a.m. Spend 27 minutes or whatever, uh, like meditating and then go back to sleep. Like, I think that could be the best way for you to make sure you have some of your own time. I'm not sure those little hobbits are awake at those hours. Uh, it's hard to be when you have people in your everyday life that don't understand why you're doing it. I hear what you're saying, friend. I don't think they have to understand, though. This is the first time I've seen Kiki in not eating you. Yep, I'll puff. I, th I think she has gotten a little bit more disciplined. Like, after she wrecked me yesterday, the day before yesterday, like, we kind of just, uh, I didn't entertain it. I was a little bit more strict of my, ha uh, don't do that thing. And, oh, uh, now she doesn't do that thing anymore as much. Mm, Hobbits, <laughs> my oldest, and hey, Elpo, thank you for joining us, my friend. It's nice to have you here. My oldest tries to help by telling her sisters I'm meditating in the background noises, whispering, arguing to leave me alone, etc. Yeah, leave mom alone. Leave mom alone. You hear this. Mom doesn't want us to bother her right now. She's meditating. She wants to be quiet. Shh, leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Candace. Oh, that sounds way neat day 222. Coming up soon too. Yeah. I like I'm gonna I'm gonna celebrate all of these double numbers as well. It's gonna make me happy. I'm looking forward to having day four thousand four hundred and forty four. Four numbers, all of them being four. Stonks power. Day three hundred and thirty three is going to be in this year as well. I'm also looking forward to that one actually. It sounds so pure. It really does. It sounds like that it's actually how I imagined it. Just this childhood, like innocence and understanding of this thing. And yet, being completely oblivious as to what it is they're doing. It's beautiful. Yeah, Mel deserves a break. Uh, he could. How could he <laughs> read and not comment? Might be tough. It might actually be tough. An exercise and discipline. Mm, you're very right, Edmund. It would be. Because now, technically, I've, I've become very conditioned, very accustomed, very patronized in my behavior where I'm used to 
you know, responding constantly to every single one of you friends. And I, I still will, in a way, try and respond. I think you, I think, yeah, yeah, I, I pictured myself in that state of mind and I'm like, mm-hmm, I think I would know that I, there would be still some interaction. It wouldn't be this, but there would be some, 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 some interaction. <laughs> I'll admit, the first thing I thought uh, I would want to do about a silent stream would be to write silly comments to make Meld laugh. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna test my discipline to the max? Does laughing count as breaking your vow of silence? <laughs> I don't feel so. I feel you only break your vow of silence if you use your tongue. Right? I don't laugh like ha ha la ha 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 ha. Yeah, is a laugh a break? <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe I should be in complete silence if I take a vow of silence. Maybe that's the point, right? Don't make a peep. Stub your toe. Say nothing. I thought the same thing there, so you're gonna, I'm gonna be a riot. You're gonna try and break me. I'm not a breakable. You can't break me. I'll, 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 no, I can't. I'm digging my own grave right now, aren't I? Your friends are like, oh, are you sure, Melbourne? We're gonna bring out the big guns, dude. Have you sitting in your ass laughing? <laughs> oh, he's catching up. We're almost caught up. Yes, we are, El Puff. We are almost caught up. I thought the same thing. He'll catch up, huh? Edmund and Toasty. I have my ESPN. Send me all of those ESPNs. Uh, we are absolutely on a wavelength, girl. I can send you exactly Echo's ESPN. <laughs> you cannot vibrate your vocal cords. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm vibrating vocal cords if I laugh. <laughs> no, I can't. Damn it, you're right, Edmund. Laughing does vibrate vocal cords. Wow, silent stream, and he reads to himself. All we see are head nods and those light bulb moment faces, and then the staring into the abyss look. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, how do you know me this well? <laughs> you don't know me. Maybe you know me. It's probably going to be a bunch of the staring into the abyss. Or should I stare directly into the camera? Passionately making eye contact. Which would be worse? Uh, laughing with your tongue. What the fuck? I'm dying. I tried to do it. I had to try it. I was like, is laughing with your tongue a thing? And then, no. Apparently, no. It's not a thing, Toasty. Uh, you could just stare directly. Yeah, it did the camera of a blank expression the whole time. I think the blank expression would be a little bit much. <laughs> I think I would make myself laugh if I tried to do that, actually. Uh, I'm kind of what our monk friend does, right? Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. I I'm like picturing it now. Lol. Wait, what the heck was that? Why are we vibrating vocal cords? We're talking about the vibration of vocal cords. If we're taking a vow of silence, we're not allowed to vibrate vocal cords. Hi, monk friend, if you're lurking. Maybe, maybe. We love you too, Fred. Stare directly to our soul through your camera. Okay, okay. Uh. <laughs> that was that was a weird experience for me even what what was that uh, that that i mean we've never done that before new things man that makes me feel something mel trying to laugh in different ways is the best now i'm thinking about it dude usually you don't think about the way that you laugh and then you're like if someone says oh you have a nice laugh and you're like what, what is how how do i laugh how do i laugh in the way that they think it's nice again <laughs> Oh, uh, well, yeah, I'm dead. There we go. <laughs> Inquisitive. Yes, I was trying to, to find all of the nuances. I was like, I was picturing if I was actually looking at a soul, you know, and I was looking at like a, a little circle of a camera lens. So I was like imagining myself in my inquisitiveness, like flipping it over 
and like t looking at it from this direction and from this direction and it was like this ball of light that had like these layers to it and like I could squeeze it and it would be like something that would, as I squeeze it the the different light bandwidth would like shine through where it's mostly white on the like edges as you squeeze into it you see like I don't know if this is making sense I'm sorry <laughs> but yeah I mean, the human somebody, the human ability to create information for itself is absolutely amazing. Beautiful pores. Ah, oh, thank you, Toasty. The most beautiful in the game, dude. Gonna patent them. <laughs> patent my pores. People will have them plastic surgery into their faces. Uh, it's like in a fish take with other dishes and he's trying to pick one of us out <laughs> bit of fish steak you're like hmm which one are you are we gonna be the best one for me to take home i used to have fish actually interestingly enough i heard a little crack there yeah there was a little bit of a crack actually so glad i was able to join today so happy you were able to join as well justin you're so appreciated always my friend it, it hit though thanks thank you friend Bro, we just had a stare down. I did not break that eye contact. And I mean, it was eye contact, technically, right? Because I felt like in a way that I was looking at what a soul would be. And if, if, if that is the way that I'm looking at this thing and you're able to look at me, could you in a way see that? No, but maybe, but not really, but maybe. <laughs> Uh, your curls look exquisite today. Ah, thank you, friend. I did actually take a little bit more care of them, interestingly enough. So I do appreciate you saying that. Oh, so close. <laughs> uh, you are beautiful, my friend. Thank you so much, Edmund. I appreciate your love, friend. I'm staring as well. Yo, that was sort of neat. The chat was silent. That was a moment. Uh, and then when it broke, the chat went off, <laughs> everyone in place. <laughs> it was perfect, my friend. At my brother's funeral, his best friend gave the eulogy and mentioned that you can remember a man by their laugh. You have a great one, Mel. Thank you so much, Justin. I appreciate that. I genuinely do. That like, that's, uh, I feel in, in the light of compliments, that as a compliment means a lot to me you know like complimenting my hair I, I love i love my hair and it's beautiful to me but i mean it's fleeting is my laugh going to be fleeting now i'm thinking about that if i'm an old man am i gonna still laugh in the same way how does our laughs change throughout our lives you know something i've been i've been fascinated by is how our opinions change on things we think we know or just things in general. Throughout our lives, we have this broad spectrum of opinions we have about things. And it's constantly growing from that place. It's it's really amazing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I love this community. I love you, Fred. It's like, this is this is such a blessed experience. I'm, I'm having so much fun. Like, genuinely, this is, like, ugh, more fun than I've had for most of my life experience. I, I, maybe that's sad to say. I don't feel that way. Ah, oh, you guys are the best. You, you really are. <laughs> Yo, remember me from day 179. I do, Yale Dropout. Thank you for joining us again, friend. It's so nice to have you here. You wanna you wanna say some spicy things? Mm? Uh, I can take spice, dude. I'm, I'm very spice tolerant. Uh, is it a contagious one, huh? It is a contagious one, huh? The laugh. Thank you. <laughs> you all really are the best. It was eye contact for me. I was staring deep into those eyes, Mel. <laughs> Mel yes. Thank you so much, my friend. Hey, old Doge. Mm, uh, it kind of reminded me of that one time Mel checked his teeth in the camera. <laughs> Dude, I'm, fucked. I'm, I'm conscious of my teeth. Teeth is not something I like thinking about at all, actually. I, I don't like... The fact that we have teeth, actually. It's just something that's kind of weird to me. It's, it's one of the things that I'm most scared about on my physical being as well. Right? You trip and you fall and then you knock some teeth out. And that can, like, really mess with your look. But your teeth are bound to kind of fail as well. It's just a part of your biology. 
Oh man, oh, I don't like thinking about teeth. <laughs> that freaking teeth. Why? Why? Why are you doing this to me, Toasty? You know, you know where to pick as well. I know you. I'm freaking looking at you, Toasty. Melty got the best community for real. I mean, it's literally you, Fred. So yeah, I can, I can 100% agree. I feel I'm definitely biased, but you are absolutely the best community ever. So much love. Puff is right. That a niner. Thank you for joining us as well, my friend. It's fascinating to see how your body is well connected to your soul. Such a great person. <sighs> my friend, if anything, I'm just your mirror. What you see in me is something you can see in yourself. And that's why you can see it in me in the first place. Not everybody sees what you see. And the fact that you see it says something about you. It says something about me as well. And that's why we're here together. But I want you to take some, some credit. Mm -mm -mm. Gummy bears would be an enemy without teeth. I mean, I do enjoy wine gums as well, which is like a step up from gummy bears. Like add, a, add about 50% more gelatin to gummy bears and you have like wine gums. And I do enjoy those. But I, I'm not saying I would rid myself of my teeth. I just wish teeth were something, you know, more like surefire, you know, like my hands kind of going to be my hands for as long as I have them. But teeth, they, they're so brittle, you know, like literally you can break your own teeth with your teeth. That's how brittle they are. You know, I like, I don't like that. I don't like, that. <laughs> I don't know why it's, it's a thing, but I don't like it. Uh, Viking, oh. <laughs> you want to be creeped out by teeth. Check out veneers, creepiest shit ever. I know, friend. I mean, like, some of the old American presidents had, like, the weirdest, wackiest teeth as well. My mom was a dentist. I'm happy for you, actually, Alpath. That, that sounds like a blessing. Having a mom as a dentist. Gonna have good teeth. That came out of my face. Oh, I pulled my second oldest... Uh, baby tooth a few days ago and she looked mortified that came out of my face and exactly exactly like I mean this is just one body that we've experienced you know in this infinite experience that we continually experience at the end of the day as well imagine the amount of different beings we've experienced as our eye you know maybe they were like those those gray aliens that you can kind of like visualize as the basic alien right technically from their perspective behind their eyes it's still going to be the same awareness we are experiencing the awareness we have of where we are in our environment in our in our current body right this is the exact same experience for all of us so <laughs> yeah as, as toasty said a little bit earlier Billions and bill or trillions and trillions of lives on trillions and trillions of different uh, planetary scales, dimensions, you name it. Go go all the way deep if you wanna. Love y'all beyond words, gotta run. Hope you all have a great weekend and happy fourth to my American friends. Thank you so much for being here with us, Justin. We really enjoyed your presence today. Thank you for co-creating with us. Uh, we are the source of what we perceive. Yep, 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 yep. Absolutely. Uh, I have a very crooked teeth. It's just like a pear trap. <sighs> Toasty. I didn't even notice at all. Like, for the record, I don't look at teeth. I look at eyes. Because I believe there's a lot more to be learned in someone's eyes than there is to be learned about their teeth. So, yeah. I didn't notice at all, my friend. You're beautiful, my friend. I just, you're, you're beautiful, man. Every mother becomes a dentist, a chef, a nurse, etc. unknowingly. Pretty much, it becomes a necessity. And that's why you're so appreciated. You're, you're true superheroes, you moms. I get paid in drawings and flowers. Stonks. Drawings and flowers from your actual children. Imagine that. You've created this thing that now creates things for you. Your, your, your literal life essence is producing art that you get to hold. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's crazy. And it's beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. Viking, that sounds accurate, actually. <laughs> Plus the sound when people scrape silverware across their teeth. The worst. No. 
no 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 don't <laughs> oh do that i'm sorry it's chill i can't stand when my girls grind their teeth i can't stand it either and i used to grind my teeth when i was sleeping i don't think i do that that much anymore my friends we've come to the end of the stream thank you so so much for joining me for as long as you did goodbye friends i love you so much i'll see you again tomorrow I should mush and mush. I should mush. I should mush. Come on, walk. Walk, walk, walk. Come on, 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 walk. Come